Welcome back! The ferryman told us about uh, a magic map that we might be able to use to travel to the other islands. Because, well, as you can see, the ferry obviously isn't going to get us there. And Alexander is used to traveling by magic map, I guess. And apparently the pawn shop owner knows more about that. However, I actually want to go into Elise Books again before we go there, because I do believe somebody will be there. Good day again. How may I help you? You may not help us um, at the moment. Because this is the person I was hoping would be there, and indeed he is. An odd-looking man is reading in this stuffed chair. He wears a vest, balloon-style pants, and pointed shoes. There's something deliberately silly about the man, as though he were a performer of some sort. Well, he's reading the book from the table, which is about court entertainers. So perhaps he himself is too a jester. Let's see if we can talk to this fellow. Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. Wait, the princess? You know the princess? Wait, I think actually if you... The fellow in the chair seems to want to be left alone. Yeah, it must be some other place in the game. I remember that you can get a, a funny message if you use the hand icon at him at some place, but apparently not now. Excuse me again, sir. You mentioned the princess. I told you I'm not interested in talking to strangers. Well, I guess we should introduce ourselves then. You see, if he really knows the princess, he might be worth getting to know. Let's show him our ring to um, convince him that we are a prince and a friend of Cosima. Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, but my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. <laughs> Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying flitmice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Why, by a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But... you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I... I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me. A Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The King and Queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known. <laughs> terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition. And not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court and have been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Caliphon and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life. So in love. And Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited. How they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing. Smart as a whip. Kind and sweet. 
Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the Wazir or his plans for Kasima. You and me I'm both. still living at the Castle of the Crown as Court Clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing, Kasima's pet nightingale. I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. Now I'm afraid I must hurry back to the castle. I'll try to return to the bookshop again later. Thank you for speaking with me, Jalo. I hope we meet again soon. We made a new friend! And certainly someone with close access to the castle can be useful to have as a friend. I also must comment on the quality of the writing here, because Jolo quite easily had the potential to be just as annoying as Cedric was, but he simply isn't. Instead, he's, he's actually a very likable character. And, as I already told you, all the text and dialogue in this game was written by Jane Jensen, and it is just so much better than what we got in King's Quest V. Combine that with the fact that we actually have some good voice acting in this game. And you can see why I like this game so much more than the previous one. Although that is only part of the reason, of course. It's also a much better game. Okay, time to look at the pawn shop. The sign says pawn shop. Oh, does that mean they sell uh, chess pawns? Old lamps for new. Old lamps for new. I guess not. The pawn shop window has the words curios and antiques painted on it. What an interesting looking shop. Indeed. There's a pot uh, in front of it. A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. Is there anything in the pot? Alexander examines the large pot. It's currently empty, but a few scraps in the bottom indicate that it is used as a dump site on occasion. Oh well, tough luck. Let's go inside. Old lamps for new. Old lamps for new. I don't have any old lamps. Not yet, anyway. Good day. Good day. Hey, another guy in a black cloak. A mysterious old man also patronizes the pawn shop. He steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under his hood. Hmm. I'm getting very suspicious of uh, all these old people with cloaks. The pawn shop is a dimly lit place with a slightly musty smell. Curiosities litter every corner and every shelf. For sale are articles that range from the bizarre to the commonplace, from the priceless to the practical. And it looks like he also has glowing yellow eyes. What is up with that? At least the pawn shop owner seems to have normal eyes. The pawn shop owner is a mysterious fellow. His face is old and inscrutable, and there's a glint of sheer iron in his gaze. Still, Alexander senses this is someone he can trust. Well, it seems most of the people here uh, are pretty friendly, aside from the vizier, obviously, and that boy who tried to kill us. Oh yeah, and the two guys in black cloaks. Um, assuming they aren't the same guy, it's a bit hard to tell. There's actually a lot of interesting uh, stuff uh, in here, so before talking to the uh, owner, I am actually going to look around a bit. 
A horn, probably used for drink or powder, hangs from the ceiling. A worn leather wineskin is suspended from the ceiling. If Alexander wants anything from the pawn shop, he'll have to first give the pawn shop owner something in trade. Okay. Some, some of these things actually also give a message when you try to talk to them. The dusty shop remains peacefully quiet. The horn has plenty of nothing to say. A strange-looking winged device occupies one corner of the room. It is frail with disuse. Alexander finds it intriguing. Perhaps he thinks it was once used in a local sporting event in which enthusiasts jumped from cliffs, glided on air currents, and then attempted to land, frequently crunching a bone or two in the process. Alexander shudders at the thought and decides to stick to dragon slaying. Yeah, that seems a lot safer. The wings have long been silent. Seems like it. A suit of armor. An old suit of armor stands in the pawn shop. It looks like a vigilant guard against thieves and carpet salesmen, even though it is headless. Perhaps it is true that our ancestors were smaller as a rule, for that suit of armor looks a pinch too tight to fit Alexander. Besides, in this climate it would be awfully hot. Or maybe just the people from the land of the Green Isles are smaller than Alexander. The Man of Steel is stumped for an answer. Indeed. I guess it's hard to say something without a head. A small red drum beats no more on the shelves of the pawn shop. Alexander's musical abilities have always leaned more towards wind instruments. Hmm. Could that be a hint? Although actually we also will use a percussion instrument later, but anyway. rat a tat tat <laughs> That is just so weird. A few well-aged barrels probably hold assorted smaller goods and perishables. Alexander isn't interested in those storage barrels. Do they have anything to say? The dusty shop remains... Nope. The land of the Green Isles must have at least one inhabitant with interest in the mystical, for a crystal ball has been traded in along with the more common household goods. Alexander will know his future soon enough if he just keeps on with his adventure. It wouldn't be fair to peek. Well, that's a bit hypocritical, considering we visited an oracle in Kingsford 3, and we'll do so again later in this game. But apparently we're not allowed to use the crystal ball. The crystal ball remains perfectly clear and says nothing. Too bad. We'll continue looking at some of this stuff in the next video.